Yeah. Doing some Sparty. I just need to relax. <laughs> I won't tell Bill. Oh, we're hanging in there. I hope everyone's out there staying safe. It's crazy, crazy times. Yeah, I, I sometimes think about doing the pencils. I did, um, what did I do, dark side? Yeah, but I think I only did a, um, when I was doing the dark side pencils, I think it was just a time lapse. You know, the reason I don't do it is it's hard. Because <laughs> um, when, when, I'm, when I'm penciling, I'm using a different part of my brain than when I'm inking. And the inking part and the coloring part, it's just easier to talk, not just talk, but think. Because um, it's just a different part of your brain. You know, so if, if I ever do, uh, you know, a penciling one, it's, it, you know, I'm not going to talk at all. Um, but maybe I should do it eventually. There's a bunch of stuff I need to do. Who knows if I'll ever get to it all. Do you usually listen to music or a podcast while working? Uh, yeah, a lot of times. So if I'm penciling, if I'm penciling, I usually listen to nothing and or, you know, music without too many lyrics. Well, I know, I'll, I'll listen to music. Um, but that's if I'm doing sketches, layouts, anything where I have to think. But a lot of times I'll listen as well. And if I'm inking, um, coloring, or painting, Especially for a long time, it actually helps to have an audiobook. Oh, hey, John. <laughs> Always good to see you, even if you are stalking. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my eye right there, pretty much. <laughs> This is, this is how I feel. Pretty, I mean, we're, we're doing fine, but just mentally just needed a break. Just need to do something nice and relaxing. I got a whole lot of thought.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, extra relatable. I, did, I also did a cap, cap piece kind of in the same vein. Cap's not quite giving the thumbs up, but, you know, put it this way, he's seen worse. <laughs> Uh, do I work digitally nowadays? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I still do both. I've just been doing a lot of this kind of commission style work lately. Like I haven't opened my commissions list. I just had a bunch of backlog. And so I've been doing those because I, I pretty much quit most of my, uh, you know, quote unquote real work. Um, I did do one Batman cover for DC, which was a nice change of pace. But in general, uh, just with the way things are right now, I need flexibility. And fortunately, you, you guys give me that. So it's like I just say, oh, I'll finish this at some point. And I do eventually, but it just takes a long time. The good news is I, I have been actually making progress. So more progress than I was making, which was uh, zero progress before. Uh, this one will be for sale, um, but it'll be through my art dealer, Mark Hay, uh, of SplashPageArt.com. So I don't know when we're going to do it, but I will let you guys know via social media and before we put it up for sale. I'll probably do the same for Captain America. By the way, today's session is just going to be a quick one. I, I want to get it wrapped up before two. Uh, two Pacific time. But um, I'm close enough that I, I want to do some colors as well. We'll see if I have time. Because I'm going to do the background and the um, spice sense will have a, a colored line. So I'm going to use acrylic wash for that. And I'm using my new camera mount, which I like. It's one of those bendy arm things. Um, so I can get it kind of exactly where I wanted it. I almost got like the super, super expensive one, but I decided not to. You know. If, if I get uh, as many YouTube subscribers as Instagram, then maybe I'll, I'll think about it. I'll splurge. I want one of those ones that, like, you twist the, the one knob. It's a, the photographer's magic arm. They're super nice. But this one was about 20, 25 bucks, so it'll do. Uh, what was that? Let me look at the questions again. Ha, looks spectacular. Thank you. Uh, did those go auction or fixed price? Um, I don't know what he's going to do. He might He might do an auction. Uh, we did a Wonder Woman uh, during the live stream earlier today, and that was an auction. Um, are you going for brown eyes on Peter? Yeah, I usually do brown eyes for Peter. Hey, John, is that, is that Ethan's dad? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good to hear from you, John. I hope you guys are doing fine. We're we're doing well over here. You know, we're just uh, sitting tight. I, I don't know what day this is. Seventy. It's over seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven, something like that. Any upcoming work I can talk about? Uh, yeah, actually, I did uh, an eight-page vision story that got delayed because of the pandemic. But if all goes well, it should still come out in July. Uh, not sure at the exact date, but you know, once once I know, I'll I'll post it all over social media and my blog and everything. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's for Alex Ross's 
uh, Marvel Snapshots. And uh, eight pages, I wrote it and painted it myself. It's all digital, so I don't have any original art to sell. But, uh, you know, it was a, I, I really liked writing for myself. It was kind of the first time, I, I think it's, yeah, my first published uh, written work. So I, I hope it does phenomenally well. And if it doesn't, I can blame the other people who are in the anthology with me. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, I mean, you know, I basically had free reign. I just, I had this one idea or a vision story that was kicking around in my head. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I thought it was a cool idea. And uh, I, I, I knew it was a good idea because... When I told it to my editor, uh, Tom Brevoort, and I told it to Alex Ross, uh, you know, both of whom have uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of Marvel history and, and lore and, and whatnot, uh, both of them not only had, had not seen it done before, but were confused <laughs> by the idea. And I, normally that's a bad thing, but uh, I, I think in this case it's going to work. So I use Vision's powers in a, in a new way that doesn't change anything. It's just uh, something that I don't think he had ever done before. And, uh, well, well ho hopefully you'll read it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, what I will say is it takes about two, two reads. So you read it once, and the, whole, the first read you're like, I don't quite understand what's going on, or at least the few people I've let read it, that's what they said. And then upon uh, second reading, uh, it makes, you know, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. But, you know, I, I like stories like that, so I'm hoping that uh, other people will as well. You know, I don't, I don't want all stories to be like that, but for this one, it just, I kind of had one idea, and I, I thought it was decent, and uh, I hope I executed it well enough. All right. I think I'm going to wait to do the background because that's that's going to be acrylic wash. Uh, and if you guys aren't familiar with acrylic wash, it's acrylic paint that is uh, matte uh, once it's dry. So it's completely flat. So right now I'm just uh, erasing all my pencil lines. So I can get, you know, color is always a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. And by zoom out, I mean move the camera. So you guys can kind of see my palette and a little bit more of my setup. Because I got widescreen here on YouTube, so I might as well use it. Uh, so I'll be using Holbein watercolor on top of a Pentel brush pen, which is uh, a waterproof ink. And so once it's dry, it fudge. Now, if you don't let it dry, it will budge. If you don't wait, uh, you know, I usually give it at least a couple minutes, sometimes more if I'm gonna really be working it. And then this is just my kneaded eraser. Paulo's the man, comma, baby. I'm more of the man, baby. <laughs> that's 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 what my what's what I tell my kids. I'm a professional child. I get to do exactly what I wanted to do when I was their age. Uh, my daughter is almost five, and loves superheroes as well. All right. Where is my, you would think I have all this stuff. All right, I got my brush. It's a Rosemary and Company, uh, Kalinsky Sable. Some poor squirrel probably died so that I could paint Spider-Man, so. Let's give it up for the squirrel. All 
I'm assuming they, they die. I don't, I don't know that for sure. I'm going to start with some Payne's Gray. And the lenses. And I think I'll do... You know what? Usually I do I do the lenses. I mean, they're, the lenses are white, typically, but um, I usually give them a kind of a cool look to differentiate them from the white of the paper. But since Spidey here is uh, in the middle of a tough day and there's fire all around, I'm going to be a little warmer, so I'll use some yellow ochre. Because... Uh, Everything's going to crap around him, but he's still, still in good spirits. He's going to make it. We're all going to make it. Well, most of us are going to make it. At least for a little while. All right, and now the most fun part, I'm going to do some red. I think, I think I'll have some rim lighting. So, uh, this is, so when, when I'm doing watercolor, you kind of got to think ahead a couple steps. And so this is not the color that I will use, or it won't be the final color. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to establish the shadows. And it's just, a, it's a simple, it's simple rim lighting setup, but I just I want to make sure that I know what the boundaries are going to be before I go in with a really dark, dark colors. So I'm going to use a lighter red, but in the final stage, it'll be much darker. And the light around the edges will be either, it'll look like light red, but it'll really be kind of like an orange. And in fact, that's most, if I'm ever doing a Spidey painting, you know, if it looks like he's in, in sunlight, I'm actually not using red at all. I'm usually using orange, maybe like a little bit of red, but it's got to be a very warm red, like a vermilion. Uh, this one right I'm using right now is called permanent red, and it's actually fairly cool in color. I always love rim lighting because it's it's kind of easy, um, but it, at the same time it's also very dramatic. So you just basically paint all of the planes that are facing you, or you know roughly facing you, the darkest color, and then everything around the sides is lighter. It can be somewhat of a crutch, but, you know, it's effective, so I don't worry about it. I think I'm going to concentrate on the mask here. Looks pretty good. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the nose at all. I don't think I do. You know, sometimes, sometimes when you make the nose too prominent on Spidey, it just doesn't look right. Like part of what makes Spidey look like Spidey is just like he's a cartoon. Like you don't even think about the nose. You know, you have to think about it when you're in profile. Um, Now I'll use a little bit of the orange. I'll kind of come in here and, you know, I'm proceeding with caution. I'll probably end up being darker than this and a little bit more red, but I just want to go slowly. 
So this is a mixture of vermilion and uh, the orange. I don't know what, what kind of orange it is. It just looks like orange to me. Sienna and go ahead and paint in that eye. Now I, I kind of want to do it pretty dark because you know it's it's in a recessed area. You know the mask is should keep it in deep shadow. Uh, but I kind of want to do a drop shadow effect on it. You know. But the other thing, when you're doing the, the ink, you know, with watercolor on top of it, you don't want to go too dark because you, you still want to keep the, the ink as the, the darkest dark. You know, that's supposed to be your pure black. But in reality, when you're looking at it, it's, um, you know, it's not, it's not pure black. Uh, so it means you have to keep your darkest watercolor uh, relatively light in comparison. I, you know, you don't want to go down more than uh, 75%. All right, it's 142. I'm going to keep going for maybe another 10 minutes, guys. Appreciate you guys all coming out. I mean, I know you guys have nowhere else to go, but. <laughs> I'll take one more look at the questions right before the end. Drop shadow. This is uh, Van Dyke Brown that I'm using. probably should have taped this down somewhere, but I didn't. And uh, this paper, you know, it's fine. Uh, it's buckling a little bit, but it'll flatten out eventually. Uh, but technically, this is actually from a watercolor block. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, it's, uh, it's a pad of paper. They're all glued to each other, and it forms like a pretty stiff block. And then as you finish one, you just peel off the top one. So, but this one's already been peeled off because I was, I just need more paper. Now I'll use a little bit of burnt umber and Van Dyke Brown for the hair. Because he was in a pretty tough fight. Took a lot of licks. And now his hair is showing. Just put a little bit of a reflection in the eye. That's just with uh, more yellow ochre and a 
just a touch of black, not very much at all. Just to kind of gray it down a little bit. Add a little black to the eyes as well, because I want this, the final piece, I want it to be a little warmer than I usually do. So typically with the, the eye, you know, the under lid, whatever you want to call it, this part, the black part, I'll use Payne's Gray, but that's a little bit too cool of a color for me right now. So I'll warm it up by adding black. You know, it still looks blue, but it's a little bit more in gamut. And now we do the hand. Itching to do the hand for some reason. Oh, and the guy got to do his bandages. So I'll make those a little warmer with some yellow ochre. Payne's gray to do the blue part of his costume. And then once that's dry, I'll add a little bit of black. And I believe it's ivory black. Give you guys a peek real quick. This is the watercolor I typically use. A Holbein watercolor, permanent red. And uh, what's the black that I use? Is it lamp black? Actually, maybe it's lamp black. I don't know, just black. <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right, let us do some red. And again, what I'm doing is I'm establishing where the shadows are going to go for the rim lighting more than anything else. You know, I'm taking liberties. Uh, that's a nice thing with the, the comic style is, you know, technically if this were his hand, there wouldn't be rim lighting right here. Um, but I don't care and no one can stop me. Uh, but when I want to go for a deep, dark red, I will end up using um, alizarin crimson and actually a little bit more Payne's gray. Keeping things pretty dry. Uh, that's the one, one thing I think most people don't get about watercolor is just because it's called watercolor doesn't mean you have to use a lot of water. If you look at my brush, it's actually not holding that much. It's just enough water to keep all of the bristles stuck together and uh, not much more than that. And so, you know, when people say watercolor is difficult to control, that's, that's actually what the issue is. They're just using too much water. At least I think that's what's wrong. doing a little kind of cast shadow effect from the finger above it. You know, so if, if you look at your your fist, your, your fingers kind of radiate. So, you know, cartoon fist sometimes looks like this, everything's straight, but really when you clench it, it goes like that. So there's really a lot of kind of intricate angles within there. So, you know, even though it's kind of like a block fist, it, uh, there's a lot of curves in there, and the angles do not line up. They radiate. And then, since this is how I usually like drawing Spidey, uh, I like him to have dirty gloves. 
And especially for this one, I wanted to have dirty clothes. So I'll come in here with black and make him really look like he's been crawling all over New York City. And those buildings are old and dirty, at least on the outside. So anywhere where his hands will connect with the ground, it's going to be nice and dirty. I think we're going to wrap it up, guys. Like I said, it's just going to be a quick one, but I will do maybe a couple minutes of q and I'm going to look back through the old comments to see if I missed anything. Uh, did I already stream on Comic Art Live? Yeah, that has ended. Kind of like what I do with Hellboy. Yeah, I usually use uh, some orange in Hellboy because you always have to light him with fire. I mean, it's in the name. Uh, watercolor ever reactivate the ink? Nope, it's waterproof ink. So once it's down and dry, it is down. It's not moving again. Thank you, Jason S. <laughs> Sorry, John. Uh, duty calls. Got the kids upstairs. You can you can thank my wife and uh, our friend Karen for taking care of the kids. What's your favorite Spidey cover uh, that I've done? I don't know. <laughs> I, I like the one where I got to draw everybody. That was for the 75th anniversary. But if I had to choose just Spidey, probably ASM 641. Just like I had one idea and they approved it immediately. They being uh, Tom Brevoort, my editor at the time. And uh, that was that. It was good to go, and it was super easy to paint because it's just like no background, but it worked. Did you like doing concept art for Ultimate Spider-Man? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, that's kind of my favorite part about comics because there's just like, you just doodle and there's really no rules. And it's just like a lot more fun. I mean, I enjoy the process of actually making the comic, but it's just, it's fun to just, draw different versions I, even uh like doc ock like i got to do a bunch of different versions of what he was going to look like uh none of i don't think any of them really got used but man that was fun Daredevil, thank you thank you daniel uh i will be doing more commissions during the weekend i don't know if i'll live stream any of them uh anything that i do finish will be uh sold through splash page art that's splashpageart.com, uh, my art rep, uh, Mark Hay. Oh, thank you. Glad you like the Venom variants. I never get tired of doing Venom. I almost did one of the 4 by 6 uh, Venoms, but I didn't have time. Uh, these are the 4 by 6s These have all been sold. They were sold during Comic Art Live. Uh, and hopefully it went pretty well. So... I, I hope they plan on doing another one maybe in August because um, it was a lot of fun just talking and uh, like I said, we actually got to sell some some artwork. So, All right, guys. Well, uh, everyone, thank you for coming out. Uh, watch me do this you know, fairly quickly. I'll finish it in the next few days maybe. And uh, I'll live stream if I can, but no promises. Um, you guys stay safe. Um, <laughs> that's all I'll say. Just please stay safe if you can. And, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support over the years. And, uh, you know, we're, we're doing fine so far. Hope you guys are too. All right. 
Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye.